Hello and welcome to Unit 1 of Week 4. My name is Sissi Rute and I'm your instructor for the last two weeks of this open SAP course. I hope Week 3 was revealing and you are now ready to move on to this week. As you have learned by my colleague Melanie, how open items are created and monitored, we want to continue in this unit with paying and collecting money in your daily business. You will get to know in this unit some standard configuration settings for paying and collecting money and see how the system supports the end user to reduce the manual effort by an automated payment process. What have we done so far? In the past three weeks, my colleagues demonstrated several business scenarios in the system. Order to cash and procure to pay scenarios like selling a product or buying a service, creating travel and expense reports and reporting a VAT return. What we can see here is that processing payables, receivables and payments is a standard process normally highly auto automated, which occurs in many business scenarios. As Melanie has explained this graphic already in more detail in her first unit of week three, I just want to summarize it and use it for your orientation in this week. In SAP Business by Design, the goods and services value chain is separated from the monetary value chain that represents the cash flow management. This was motivated by the fact that the monetary value chain, which contains invoicing and payment, is standardized to a great degree. All units of this week will focus mainly on the orange highlighted box, the cash register. Please keep in mind that this slide is from a financial perspective a simplified view on the integrated processes in the system. To keep it simple and make it better consumable, we focus on the straightforward processes and did not draw all dependencies. Depending on your country and the agreements with your business partners, you need to pay and receive money in different ways. For example, by check, bank transfer, direct debit and others. These different ways are reflected as payment methods in the system. To reduce your implementation effort, SAP Business by Design provides pre-configured payment methods. In this unit, we will handle internally initiated payments. Internally initiated means these payments need to be triggered either automatically or manually in the system. For example, an end user executes a payment run for incoming payments by direct debit for several customers. The slide gives an overview of available payment methods for internally initiated payments. Externally initiated payments will be shown in the next unit. One thing I want to mention is that in some cases the pre-configured payment methods are country dependent. This means, for example, the payment method Bill of Exchange Receivables is only available for France, Italy and Spain, and not for Germany. I will show you later in the system demo automatic payments by bank transfer and incoming payments by direct debit. Most probably you provide your bank electronic payment files so that the bank can process them. The system supports you in doing so, but you need to define a file format for this process. SAP Business by Design supports the most popular file formats of the countries listed here. This can reduce the implementation effort. As an example, for France the file format AFB Domestic or for Germany the file format SEPA Credit Transfer is available in the system. In case that your bank uses its own custom payment formats or a variant of one of the popular, popular formats, you can create user-defined payment file formats. There are two ways to do this. For flat file formats with easy to medium complexity, it is recommended to use the business configuration. To define more complex file formats, you can use the SAP Cloud Application Studio. To reduce the workload of users, automatic processes are necessary whenever possible. The system supports this by automatic payments. When creating automatic payments by a payment run, the system automatically selects open payables and receivables and creates payment proposals based on them. For open payables, it does not matter if the source document is an invoice, a tax liability or a travel and expense report. The automatic selection of open items in the system is done amongst others on payment terms, the next payment run date and the payment strategy that is assigned to the customer or supplier. We will have a look, deeper look into this um, in the demo system, uh, in the system demo, sorry. <laughs> Why do we need a payment strategy? As many of you may know, paying without cash discount is quite expensive. Let's assume 
You have agreed with your supplier on 2% cash discount when you pay in 14 days or the net amount when you pay in 30 days. In case you pay the net amount after 30 days, you let go an interest rate of 45% per annum. The automatic payment process in SAP Business by Design supports you to ensure that cash discount is taken. For example, you can define in the payment strategy to pay with cash discount on the latest possible date. To reduce your implementation effort, the system comes with one default payment strategy, which can be adjusted if necessary. You can also define additional payment strategies if needed. By using payment integration scenarios, it is possible to fully automate the payment process. You can use out-of-the-box payment integration scenarios to exchange, for example, payment files with your bank or in case of credit card payments, credit card settlements with your clearinghouse. In addition, a customer-specific integration based on web services can be implemented as well. Now let's go to the system demo. I'm already logged on as Eduard Becker. The first thing I want to show you is in WorkCenter Payables, which, is, which you know already from the last unit or the last uh, week, um, mainly regarding um, yeah, monitoring and creating um, open items, but also the per periodic task for payment runs is included here. We have entered here in the system a weekly payment run. This means this payment run is scheduled on a weekly basis and we can see here in the schedule how, oh sorry, uh, we can see here in few jobs how the schedule is done. Uh, the next start date time is on the 6th of February and the recurrence is on Monday in, on, of every week. What I want to show you here as well is uh, the list of um, payment proposal lists which are available here and also application log IDs. So each execution of the payment run um, creates here an entry in this table and you can see here the application log ID and this is where I want to go in first because here you can see if any errors occurred or anything else went wrong. So first of all the summarizing of the messages shows that four new payments were created if I go into the results tab, you can see by expand all that here payment IDs were cre uh, created for the different suppliers, which are here shown as well. Let's go back and then I want to show you the payment proposal list. So as there were two payments created, we have of course also a payment proposal list. Proposal means you have still the option that you can change it. Um, either select additional open items or deselect uh, open items which are assigned to this uh, payment and then you can save it and execute it afterwards so that the payment will be done then by the bank. So let's see here for example for Eduard Becker, for myself <laughs> in this case, we have payment ID 57. If I click into that one I can see here that there are in total three open items selected these were all expense reports and based on our tests, these are double entries in a way and that's why I want to deselect them right now and just keep this 76, the 10 euro. So I close it and if I refresh now the list, you see it's shorter and we have only one item left here for Eduard Becker. In addition, I want to show you here for our supplier Alteco how the selection of open, item, open items worked there. So if we go into the payment 56 for the supplier, we have here also the tab open items. And from here you have the possibility to jump directly to the supplier invoice, um, either by the document, the internal document ID, or also by the external reference, which means the um, invoice number of the supplier. Let's jump into the screen. And then you can see here all the general uh, information. So this invoice was has an invoice date of the 23rd of January and uh, the receipt date was one day later. Um, in addition, we can see here the payment terms, which are 14 days with 3% cash discount, 30, uh, 30 days with 2% and 60 days due net. And the due date is calculated based on the uh, due net payment um, yeah, term in a way for the 60 days. 
So now we see that there is, if we pay within 14 days, we get 3% cash discount. In addition, I also wanted to show you how the system knows that this open item needs to be paid by a bank transfer. This is something I can do by directly jumping into the uh, supplier Altego GmbH and then I click on view all. You have seen that already by Melanie, um, the financial data of a supplier. And here you can see that you can define the payment method, which is also used for the payment run um, to select things or the open items. So, so far that's it. Um, just one thing to mention, why is the cash discount taken? Because the invoice was created or has an invoice date of 23rd of January, which is uh, here, the receipt date was Tuesday. As we calculate based here in the system on the receipt date, the payment terms, uh, 14 days would mean 7th of February, so still a week to go. But as we have seen before, there are no grace days uh, allowed and the next payment run will be uh, on the um, one day too late, on the 7th of February. And um, that is why it's included here in the payment run. So now let's go out and now we will execute the payments. This can be done also automated if you do in the select or if you set the flag in the selection uh, criteria of a payment run that you want to release it automatically, um, then the system will generate automatically payments and no payment proposals. But this is then something you need to reverse and cannot ch uh, change or adapt anymore. When I click on execute proposal, the system will generate the payments. Um, so the open item will be cleared. And in addition, also a posting takes place. Um, so the general journal entry will we'll have a look into it um, as soon as the system shows us, uh, us the status that it is ready for transfer. Now we're here, so the payment proposals are completed. I have here now the payment ID, for example, 54 for Melanie, who also had some expense reports. And if I click here on this payment ID, I can directly... Um, jump into um, the, um, the payment ID and see the general information. But I wanted to go to the journal entry and based on the document flow, you can see then also the journal entry what is posted. Yeah, here we have it now. So we have here the payment. And if I click here on this little icon, I can see the journal entry here in this case for the set of books IFRS. And you see that um, the cash disbursement clearing account, which means cash in transfer outgoings, um, is uh, credited. And on the other side, the other liabilities for employees is debited. So the open item is cleared. So now um, we have not done everything what is necessary to inform also the bank that they should uh, yeah, execute or process these payments. That's why we need to go to a different work center, which is the main work center for, for the cash area. It's the payment management and there in the view payment monitor, you get an overview now as the pre-selection for today's payments. So we see here right now our payments we just executed. They are all ready for transfer, which means I can now give them to the hand them over to the bank. And to do this, you have the option either to do that manually here in the payment monitor by selecting them and clicking on actions for bank transactions and create payment file. By that, the status will be changed to in transfer and also a payment file will be created. I will do that right now. There's another option, but we will come to that in a few minutes. So now we have the status in transfer. And if I select right now one of the items I can scroll down and I see here, oops, and I see here that an outbound file was created with the ID 49. And if I open that, you can see here the complete payment amount. The file type is a bank transfer. And if I click on view all, you can also have a look directly into the TXT file. which looks like that. Or um, 
You can also download it directly to um, your either to your desktop or to any uh, directory in the network. Or if you use a payment integration scenario, out-of-the-box uh, integration scenario, you can also send it electronically to the bank. We will leave it right now here. And I just wanted to mention in addition that you can also create these payment files automatically by a run, which is uh, under periodic tasks, the payment media runs. And there you see there is already a, a run defined, uh, which is a weekly run, and that's scheduled by week, of course, after Monday, after the payment proposals were created. And then it selects all payments which are ready uh, for transfer and creates the payment files for that. So far for um, the system demo, we are now going back to the slides. So let's summarize this unit with the key learnings. SAP Business by Design provides standard configuration settings like payment methods, payment file formats, and payment strategies to reduce the implementation effort. The system supports the end user to reduce manual effort for the payment process by effective automation. And it is possible to automate the complete payment process by payment integration scenarios from our partners. In Unit 2, I will show you how to process a bank statement in the system and we will concentrate on externally initiated payments. I hope you've enjoyed this unit. Thank you for your attention and see you again in Unit 2. Bye. Welcome back to Unit 2 of Week 4. The topic of this unit is processing a bank statement. In Unit 1, we talked about internally initiated payments, like outgoing payments by bank transfer or incoming payments by direct debit. Now we want to continue and process a bank statement in the system with emphasis on externally initiated payments, such as bank transfers from customers. Also, in this unit, I will, will explain you some standard configuration settings which are relevant to process a bank statement. You will be introduced to the operational bank and cash management in the system. In addition, we will talk about payment allocation and payment clearing. All transactions with your house bank need to be re re reflected in the system. You may know from other systems that this is done by postings on an account in General Ledger. Such a general ledger account normally reflects one bank account, which means for each bank account held with your house bank, you need to create one general ledger account. Contrary to that concept, in SAP Business by Design, the bank is a role of a business partner. If you create a bank, the system creates a business partner with general attributes, addresses and relationships, which is reflected by the blue frame in the graphic. In addition, it assigns the role bank to it. This role contains general attributes like bank name, bank ID, working day calendar, addresses, but also contacts and allowed payment formats, which is shown by the yellow frame. For one bank, you can define all related bank accounts. The bank account consists of a bank account number, an account determination group, currency restrictions, allowed payment methods and further attributes, which is represented by the green frame. Based on this concept, concept of an operational bank and cash management, you can always create, monitor, analyze and evaluate all transactions on a specific bank account of your house bank, as you are used to do it for other subledgers like payables or receivables. As you can use the same account determination group for different bank accounts, you can minimize your chart of accounts. As you have already seen in our last unit, SAP Business by Design comes along with pre-configured payment methods. We will focus in this unit on externally initiated payments, like an incoming payment from a customer by bank transfer or an outgoing payment to a supplier by direct debit. The slide gives you an overview of available payment methods for this purpose. Again, I want to mention that in some cases the pre-configured payment methods are country dependent. This means, for example, the payment method lockbox is only available for the US and not for Germany. To automate the process of posting incoming and outgoing payment items of a bank statement, you can use the electronic bank statement functionality. 
Also here, SAP Business by Design supports a number of pre-configured national and international file formats for bank statements, such as MT940 for several countries or BAI2 for the US and Australia. This will reduce the implementation effort. It happens that bank-specific characteristics need to be considered. In this case, you have to adapt the pre-configured settings in the business configuration. I want to mention one thing. It is important to get in contact with the technical support of your bank early in the implementation phase to verify the pre-configured file formats with them. For your business, it is relevant to process bank statements completely and not to keep one bank statement item such as customer payments, own payments to suppliers or bank interests or fees unprocessed. Many of these items allow a direct posting, like bank interests or fees to cost, as well as clearings, especially clearings of all internally initiated payments, because they should be executed without any difference. Customer payments are also mainly automatically cleared by the payment clearing. Externally initiated payments, which cannot be cleared immediately, can be at least allocated to the correct payment area or also called subledger. How does this work? During payment processing, the system applies payment allocation and payment clearing as two distinct but related steps. For incoming and outgoing payments, both steps are required. During payment allocation to the payment, um, during payment allocation the payment is assigned to a particular payment area such as accounts payable, accounts receivable or tax, and then to a particular business partner like a customer, supplier or tax authority within that area. During payment clearing, one or several open items are matched to the payment and cleared against it. The system uses the information like business partner and other payment reference information, for exam example bank account and payment amount, in a first step to select the correct business partner and in a second step to select the correct open items. Usually all relevant information is available and correct and both steps are performed automatically by the system. In some exceptional cases, for example missing customer or supplier information or transaction charges on foreign payments, the system cannot perform the processes automatically. In these cases, which should be less than 5%, manual payment allocation or manual payment clearing tasks will be created. These manual tasks will require user involvement. I will show you later in the system um, a manual clearing task created by the bank statement we will upload. As we have seen already in Unit 1, it is possible to fully automate the payment process by using out-of-the-box payment integration scenarios. These are provided by our partners. As an alternative, you can implement a customer-specific integration based on web services. In case you receive your bank statement files electronically, the manual effort for the end user is to complete the, the tasks of the payment allocation and payment clearing processes. Now let's start with the system demo. We are logged on again as Eduard Becker. The first thing I want to show you is the master data of the bank, what I explained on one of the first slides, um, that we create a business partner with the role bank. You will find that in liquidity management. And there we have the view master data. And below that, the my banks view. We have here defined one bank, it's the Deutsche Bank AG, and if I click on the internal bank ID on this link, I will get the information, the detailed information to that bank. This is just, first of all, an overview. If I click on view all, I can see more details. For example, we can see here the national bank code, the bank name, address, and other stuff. But what is important as well is the tab, tab payment formats, because here you can define which payment file formats are used uh, for this bank and or can be used, and this is defined here. Another important tab is the bank accounts. As I mentioned on the slide, you can define for your house bank or for one bank all related bank accounts. This was done here, so for example, we have one bank account number which reflects a fixed term deposit, deposit for the company 1000 Almica. We have a checking account for the same company, but you can see here as well that we have another checking account for an affiliated company, Innovat called. 
If we scroll down a bit, we can see here as well additional information. For example, also the account determination group, which I men mentioned on the slide. This group is relevant to find what Carsten already explained um, in his units in the first week, um, is defined to find the right general ledger account for the bank. And um, here you see that you can define for the different bank accounts the same account determination group. That means they are reflected on the same general ledger account, so you do not need to create for each bank account a specific general ledger account, but you can um, aggregate them on one general ledger account. So that's it so far for the bank. That's what I wanted to show you here. Let's close liquidity management again. Now I want to show you the bank statements, which are also in liquidity management. There is a bank statements view. And here we can see that for this month already bank statements were posted, also one cancelled. Uh, we can see here um, at the end the post-processing status. Uh, for this one there's nothing required, but for these two there still needs to be done something. And what I want to show you right now is how to upload a bank statement uh, based on a file what you received from, from your bank. So when you click on New, Bank Statement Upload, you uh, get the last information which was used um, by, by the system for another uploaded bank statement. So we have here the file type bank statement, the company, the bank ID which was elected and the import format. I created a file with some test data and if every information is available that should work um, and we do not need to do any tasks afterwards. So I will start the file upload right now here. The system considers now this txt file and will process it and do the postings, the necessary postings, first of all for the bank statement is itself and then tries also to allocate and clear um, the payment items, the transactions on this bank statement. Let's refresh this view. Then we see the bank statement is already posted and the post-processing status is here as well required. So if we click on the bank statement ID, you see here the information for the bank statement. You have an opening balance, a closing balance, the total credit amount, the total debit amount. And in addition, you can see here also the file ID which was used. And here you see also the link to the journal entry ID or entries which were created because we have here three set of books defined. We jump now, first of all, in the German gap set of books. So the postings are here, cash in transit against bank. This is always the case only for the bank posting, for the first posting without allocation, um, to make sure that always the bank balance is posted in the system and correct. So what I want to show you right now, if you go on view all, you can see also the transactions for this bank statement under transactions. <laughs> and here you can see there is nothing required anymore. These were assigned already. So we have here a payment um, method direct debit. So the posting for the bank statement was done, but also the assignment um, to the relevant open payment items, payments in transfer, uh, was done automatically. So if we go into the details, you can see here in the memo line dat DTA uh, data ein Einreichung Lastschriften, so direct debit. Um, this is also determined then by the system, by the um, payment method. And you can see here, let me quickly check one thing if I can scroll down a bit more. Um, now the assigned um, payment uh, payments which were done here. So we have here the document ID 51, which was also a direct debit for the customer Silberstern. Unfortunately, you cannot see the full uh, name. You see here the transaction amounts and also the allocated amounts. Here the full process is done already. We have executed a direct debit run in the system um, for these customer invoices and the bank statement was uploaded electronically and um, all the things were cleared automatically by this bank statement. In addition, there was another uh, payment method, the outgoing bank transfer of 3,000 euro here. 
Here the same, if we click on not required, we get the information of the payment allo allocation. You see here payment allocation 63. And again, it was um, um, a DTA file which was provided. That was the one we created in the last unit. And if we scroll down, we also see our payments we have created at that time. For example, for Eduard Becker, the 10 euro, if you remember then, or from, for my colleague Melanie, the 74 uh, euro which were paid for the travel and expense report. There is one topic open, that's the incoming bank transfer. You can either <coughs> post process it here directly from the bank statement. Then you would need to check what's missing here. So we can see here the account owner is HBA Sweden, which is a customer. If I look for this customer, I can select him. Then we can scroll down and check the open items, which are selected uh, when we enter this uh, customer ID above. And if I select now this uh, customer ID, uh, supply customer invoice ID, sorry, uh, which is mentioned here and also which we saw in the memo line, we can assign it to the payment. But the issue is in this case that we have a transaction amount on the bank statement, which means a payment amount of 11,025 euro, and the allocated amount of the customer invoice is 11,250. So we still have an open amount of 225 euro, and that needs to be checked then um, by a colleague. What's the reason for it? Is it, for example, cash discount taken, which was not allowed? Um, do we accept it? Um, that was, is one possibility we can do, um, that we just say we select it here and enter here the cash discount taken, because it's uh, quite a good customer and um, therefore we just say it's fine. Um, or if we do not want to do that, we have other possibilities like uh, leave the open item um, or leave this amount of 225 euro as an open item still on the account or other stuff. We will do it right now so that we say it's the cash discount. He just took it because normally we have this agreement and then just post it. <coughs> Let's go back again to um, the bank statement already. So um, we saw here was nothing else necessary to do. Perhaps we can also quickly check the bank charge, how this was posted. So if we go to this one, you see here the external transaction code was derived. It's the payment method bank charge. And uh, based on that, automatically a posting was done. Um, we go to the document flow. And there we see now the payment allocation. This is here and the um, assigned journal entry to that. And if we click on that, we can see the posting for the bank charges. So you see here, the as we have the first posting um, cash disbursement clearing account against bank, we have on the sec uh, as the second posting bank fees as an expense against this cash disbur disbursement clearing account. And therefore, this one is cleared and everything is done here as well. The same is now true for our payment allocation 85, which is now right now posted as well. So if we go here to the document flow, you see the list is a little bit, or the document flow is a little bit longer than the one we just had for um, the information of the uh, bank charges. And you see here again that you can jump from each document or source document to the journal entry if needed. On the other side, you can do these kind of postings um, as well, or re um, post-processing as well from other areas. We were now going into directly from the bank statement ID, but you can also go into the receivables work center, for example, into work. That's the so-called push principle, bring the work to the user, what you have heard from my colleagues already. Uh, in some units and uh, there you can check then if there is any clearing task available. You can also check here from the work um, overview 
do I have any clearing receivable tasks, for example, or if you go to payment management, you can check if there are open tasks for payment allocation. And you see here for the other bank statements where we saw that there is still a post-processing required, um, that there we have still some business tasks for the payment allocation open here, and they need to be yeah, executed process to complete that. So far, that's it for the demonstration in the system. Let's go back to the slides. So let's summarize this unit. SAP Business by Design provides standard configuration settings like pre-configured electronic bank statement formats to reduce the implementation effort. An operational bank and cash management in the system optimizes the processes and minimizes the chart of accounts. Automatic payment allocation and clearing processes help to reduce manual effort for the end user. And finally, it is possible by payment integration scenarios from our partners to automate the complete payment process. In Unit 3, we will have a look on petty cash payments. Thanks for your attention. Bye. Welcome back to our next unit of week 4. Unit 3 will concentrate on petty cash payments. In the past two weeks, we talked about payment processes regarding bank accounts. In this unit, I want to show you how to process payments by petty cash in the system. Let's assume an employee bought flowers by cash or received an advanced payment for a travel and expense report, which was, by the way, demonstrated in Unit 3 of week 3 by Melanie. Petty cash transactions collect transactions of type cash, uh, cash in or received and cash out or disbursements. Offset for cash disbursements and receipts are costs or revenues plus VAT, payables, receivables and cash. In SAP Business by Design, these petty cash transactions are structured as in and outgoing cash payments with reference to items, with direct posting to GL accounts or cash transfers. Each source document in your petty cash creates one or more journal entries, which depends on the number of set of books. All transactions are reconciled with the general ledger account for cash, so the petty cash can be regarded as a cash sub-ledger similar to a bank. If your company manages one or more petty cash funds, you need to make sure that sufficient cash is stored in each of them, but at the same time prevent excessive amounts of cash accumulating. Therefore, it is possible to make cash transfers between two petty cash funds, from petty cash to a bank account and vice versa. In this way, you can control liquidity and minimize security risks. The cash journal provides the entire transaction history for a specific ca petty cash fund. Here you can also monitor, print or reverse petty cash transactions if needed. In addition, I want to mention one thing. In case you want to process sales transactions and cash transactions from an external point of sale system, SAP, SAP Business by Design provides an integration scenario. In this case, several payment variants for point of sale transactions can occur, like cash payments, credit card payments or online payment services. Now let's switch to the system demo. We are again logged on as Eduard Becker. And the first thing I want to show you is in the Liquidity Management Work Center, which we have seen already before as we checked the bank data under My Banks. Now we go to Petty Cash, and there you see all active Petty Cash here in the system. On the top we have the general Petty Cash, which is used. You see there is a balance of 8,000 euro. And you can see that you also can block or close the petty cash here. Of course, if closing only if there is no balance anymore. If you click on the ID, you will see more details. For example, you can see here the company ID, which is assigned. It's Almica again. It's a current, the currency is Euro. You have a description here. And of course, you have here also, again, an account determination group, which is used to find the right general ledger account if any transaction is posted. So far that's it for um, the master data of the petty cash. Now let's move on to payment management. 
Under Work Center Payment Management, you can enter petty cash transactions. So you see here again the active petty cash funds the, uh, we have in the system. Again, here you see in the overview the balance amount. 8,000 euro is quite high. You should decide if you need to have such a high amount um, on this petty cash and maybe you want to transfer it. First of all, if we click on View, you get an overview of transactions which, which were done for this petty cash fund so far. At the moment, we have selected Confirmed of last seven days. You can select also All, then you get all transactions which were done so far. You see also the cancelled one, ones, but also the posted ones, the confirmed ones. In the overview, you have the posting date, the transaction type which was used, like outgoing cash payment or outgoing cash transfer, or incoming cash payment. You have some document description, what you can see as well. And of course, at the end, you can click directly on the journal entry ID, and then you see the posting and general ledger for it. Now let's assume we have uh, a customer who comes over to your office location and wants to pay an invoice by cash. Then you would create a new incoming cash payment with reference to items. This is then the screen where you can enter the data. The payer would be your customer, of course, in this case Cargo Logistic Hamburg. Then the system derives based on the customer information the open items which are available so far on this customer and by selecting here this flag you can easily assign this invoice that this one is paid, paid by the amount which was uh, brought by the customer to, to your office location. In addition you can enter more information, you can enter a receipt date, a receipt number, a cash payer or you can change the posting date or enter a document description. As well, you can change, if you want to, the payment amount um, manually. So you say calculate payment amount um, automatic, you, you deselect that and then you can override the payment amount as well. We keep it like that. Um, if you want to, you get also a receipt out of the system. This can be done or you can see it already by pressing preview receipt. Then you see what is, yeah, pr um, defined here in the system <coughs> for petty cash transactions as a, as a receipt uh, form. And if you're fine with everything, you can just say post. So that we can see the other um, transactions which are available, you can also create, we close this one here, we can also create then a new in outgoing cash payment with direct posting to GL account, for example, an employee went to the went to the postal office <coughs> and paid for postage. In this case, you can, but you do not need to enter any details for the payee. You have here again the receipt date, a receipt number, everything what you saw before. And um, on the bottom, you have to add now, you cannot select an open item, of course, but you have to add now an account determination group. So, for example, select it here from the list. Here we see postage or you can also just enter it as text here in, in the field and then the system will propose it. Let's say the employee paid 25 euro and of course there is tax on that but a reduced rate so you can select the tax rate for that and the system will calculate the tax amount also. In addition you can assign it to a cost center. Let's say that was for financials and if you're then fine with everything, you can post this one as well. And the third option you have is if you say your balance on your petty cash is now too high, we have now a current balance of 11,000, you can, for example, create a new outgoing cash transfer to bring your money to the bank. Let's say you want to uh, transfer 8,000 euro then you can select here the bank account or you can also select another pet, petty cash. Select the bank account and then just post it. The system will create then an incoming um, bank transfer for the bank account. And um, 
then you can uh, just use your bank statement to when the incoming cash is brought to the bank and you get a confirmation by the bank statement that this is cleared then automatically and the petty cash has already now the correct balance of 3000 euro. Um, so again, the cash journal here shows you all petty cash transactions which were done so far. Let's see if there is a refresh needed. I will just close it and go in again. So now we are here. Now we have also our cash transfer of 8,000 euro. And uh, you can easily click on any of the journal entry IDs to check what was posted in the background. You have per set of books, of course, again, a journal entry. In this case, in this system, we have German GAP, German Tax, and IFRS. The default set of books is German GAP. And you see here it, it was posted cash to cash in transit or credit on uh, the cash account and debit the cash in transit account, for example, for this cash transfer or for the expenses for the postage there was posted cash on the credit side postage as expenses on the debit side and of course the input VAT what was what, what needed to be posted if you now did anything wrong you can also reverse transactions here in this view then you just select one of your uh, payments here or transactions you have here and then just say reverse. The system proposes then a posting date, you can override it and you can also enter a document description for the reversal and you just say OK and then the transaction is re reversed again. We have to refresh again and then you see it's gone. That's it so far for the system demonstration. Now let's switch back to the slides. So what are the key learnings of this unit? You learned that you can record any cash receipts and cash disbursements for petty cash funds. By using cash transfers, you can ensure that you have sufficient cash on your petty cash funds or prevent to accumulate excessive cash amounts. This enables you to control the liquidity and minimize security risks. Unit 4 of this week will cover how to monitor cash and liquidity based on provided reporting capabilities. Thanks for your attention and see you again in Unit 4. Bye. Hello and welcome back to the last unit of week 4. In this unit I want to show you how monitoring cash and liquidity takes place in the system. We have seen so far several business scenarios up to the payment process. Based on this data we will analyze reports like today's cash position and the liquidity forecast. You will see how the system collects and aggregates relevant liquidity information based on operational processes and which reports can be used to manage cash and liquidity. You might remember this slide from week one. The main pillars of every com company to control their business from a financial point of view are liquidity management as an early warning system and to ensure financing, controlling for profitability, budgeting and planning and accounting for stakeholders, uh, for your external stakeholders. In this unit we will concentrate on the pillar liquidity management. In general, cash and liquidity management should be independent from accounting to capture the complete information. It relies on registers, not on source documents, which guarantees avoiding double counting and full audit. The relevant registers are the cash register to get an overview on all cash receipts and disbursements, such as bank transfers, checks, payment advices and planned items. The payables and receivables and the tax register to get an overview on all open payables and receivables from supplier and customer invoices, travel and expense reports, VAT declarations which are not yet paid. The purchase and sales register to get an overview on all open purchase, sales and service orders which are not yet invoiced. The purchase register does only exist logically because it's quite difficult to, or, and complex to collect the information of open purchase sales and service orders. 
you would need to consider the order value already existing deliveries, confirmations and invoices which are not yet paid. Finally, liquidity management uses value dates and the currency of the company to normalize data. The concept of collecting liquidity information in SAP Business by Design is shown here. Information on cash like the bank balance and bank advices sent by the bank as well as petty cash are taken into account as secured today. Cash in transfer like payments in transfer to the bank, credit card settlements, checks issued and de deposited are incorporated by their respective value date. Receivables from customer invoices and payables from supplier invoices, travel and expense reports and VAT reports are considered as cash with their respective value date, which is their due date. Topics which are unsecure future, like opportunities, sales contracts and orders, as well as purchase orders or contracts are not taken into account. Other cash transactions like payroll, treasury deals, receivables and payables of banks, like loans, or labor contracts are not implemented in the system. These cash transactions can be applied as liquidity plan positions manually. So what is the business value of monitoring cash and liquidity? Liquidity information is automatic automatically collected and aggregated, by, and by that you achieve better transparency to manage the liquidity position. Based on reports, like the daily cash position or liquidity forecasts, you can analyze your actual and future cash balance and optimize your liquidity position by strategies like investing or borrowing money, transfer funds or optimize cash flow timelines. Now let's go to the system. I'm logged on again as Eduard Becker and we will move first of all to the work center liquidity management. In the work center liquidity management you will find a few cash position and in this view or in this report you get an overview of all balances of your bank accounts, the actual balance and uh, also the petty cash what you can see here. So we have at the beginning on the top our checking account with an opening cash, uh, cash balance. Then we see the collections which are already in transfer and also the disbursements. Then the system calculates the net flows based on that and we get a closing, uh, closing cash balance for this account. The same we have for the fixed term deposit. Of course there are no or at the moment there are no uh, transactions planned and as mentioned for petty cash. You can also go into analyze data, then the report is opened and you can enter additional selection criteria if you want to. For example, you could say, I just want to see all my cash stor storages, so you can select them here as one possibility. Or you can say you want to see everything in a different currency, for example, or you just want to see uh, your bank accounts and then you can select the respective bank. If you ha would have more than one house bank, of course, you would see all bank accounts here in this overview. So if you want to see now a little bit more of the details, you can drill down here um, and just open the cash position transaction details and then you will see what this balance of 8,000 consists of. And um, if you remember perhaps from our last unit, we did the cash transfer um, from the petty cash uh, to the bank account and that's why you see now here for the bank account this inter incoming cash transfer it was not posted yes yet for the bank statement or from a bank statement and therefore it's still open and is recognized as a collection here. The same way you can also drill down into the disbursements and have a look what's open there and here you see what I missed, to be honest, <laughs> during um, the unit two, because I, oh no, unit one, because we wanted to pay everything and I missed to pay the tax due payment. Um, this is why it is still shown here as a disbursement and this is the whole amount what we see here. So far for the cash position, in addition, I mentioned already in the slides that we have also the liquidity forecast this is also in the Liquidity Management Work Center and you find it under the view Liquidity Forecasts. 
what you need to do for a forecast is to schedule a run because the system will pick up from the registers, from payables and receivables register, the um, open items to, yeah, to be possible then to um, show in future what will, will come up on uh, cash positions. And uh, therefore you need to schedule that because this changes from day to day and then the system needs to pick up the new items, of course. So we have here a run scheduled and uh, you see also here the application logs. This run goes every day. I did it today, started it this morning already because it starts normally during uh, lunchtime and that's why I wanted to prepare it already now for, for our recording here. And um, if you want to, of course, you can go into the application log ID, but you see already here the overall status is green, so everything is fine. We have no errors, and that's why I just would like to go directly to the liquidity forecast itself in the report. You see here the overview um, of all liquidity forecasts. You see that here is one rejected. Um, the other ones are all in modification. If you are fine with a forecast, you can release it and then this data will stay as it is. I will consider now the first one from today. And if you scroll down, you see already the overview um, of this report, what it shows us. You see a total of your liquidity um, positions. So these are all bank balances and all petty cash uh, funds you have. And also here, the structure is the same. You have the opening cash balance, the overdue payments, again, in general payments, then receivables payables in the future, then a uh, calculation of the net flows, and at the end, uh, closing cash balance. Below that, you get the details, first of all by bank, um, but you can see that also if you go into analyze data by bank account. <coughs> and and the at at the end, we see also um, payments which are not assigned yet to any bank account. This is why they are shown here at not, as not assigned. So um, let us go quickly into analyze data so that you can see which options are available there. You see here in the selection that both companies, 1000 Almica and 2000 affiliated company Innovat is uh, selected. So we have really the full overview of all bank accounts and uh, petty cash funds. You see here again the uh, liquidity forecast ID. You could select a specific time period. At the moment we see the liquidity level on a daily basis. Um, you can select a different uh, display currency conversion date. If we have also transactions in foreign currency uh, included, they will be converted. Um, and as mentioned before, you can also select a specific um, bank account. These are the options here available, but you can also switch just by uh, clicking a different view to a different um, yeah, view of, of the uh, liquidity forecast. So now we changed from the daily um, view on the monthly view, and you see now the amounts aggregated by each month of this year into the future for half a year. Also here it is possible oops, that you um, can jump into the transaction details if you want to. So, for example, uh, if we if you want to have a look of uh, what is it about here, this uh, 1785 euro, it's just a small amount, but anyway, let's use that one. What is behind that? Sorry. Then you can open here the liquidity forecast transaction details, and you see that this is a supplier invoice, which is um, posted with an expected value date or where the due date is the 2nd of February, and that's why it's included on that day. You also can go further into the future. For example, here we have 1.5 million euro. What's this about? So if you go into that, you will see that this is a bank transfer. It's an expected cash flow, and that was done by a so-called forecast planning item, which I want to show you right now how you can create such an item. <coughs> Let me quickly show you one thing. If we go into the 
it's a little bit difficult to scroll in the screen here. Um, if you, we go to the future, I will do now a planning item for the 10th of uh, February. You see that there is no transaction listed here. Um, and then we can afterwards refresh that. That's something I want to show you as well. So if we go into the forecast planning items, this is where you can create these uh, planning items. You can do that either by manually, just create one planning item or also upload planning items from Excel. Um, or you can also copy an existing one. I have prepared here already one. And by clicking on the transaction ID, you can just edit it still as long as it is in preparation. So I just mentioned I want to do that so that we can see it a little bit easier. I don't have to scroll that much into the future uh, on the 10th of February and it should expire. That means that it will not be considered in a liquidity forecast anymore on the 15th of February. Um, so that's it. It's 2.3 million a bank transfer outgoing and this is uh, for employees. Uh, let's say this is a bonus payment or something like that. I will release it. You see it's saved now. Now I cannot change anything anymore, just the expiration date. And if we now go back to the liquidity forecast, we still have the issue that this 2.3 million are not included because um, the system would need to do a refresh. So you see there is still nothing in. If we now do a refresh of planning items, Then you can scroll down again. And if we then go to the to the right side, sorry for this scrolling issue, um, then you see now the 2.3 million euro which we entered as a planning item. If you are fine with this uh, forecast, then you can just say you want to release it to make sure that nothing has changed anymore. And um, this is done by accept here under this button. And then the forecast is released and uh, can always be taken and considered again into account if you want to check anything, but will not be changed anymore. So that's it so far for the uh, system demo. Let's go back to the slides. So let's summarize this unit. Automated processes collect information about account balances and transactions from banks, as well as internal information on collections, disbursements, and other financial activities across different business units within the company. Built-in analytics and reporting ensure a seamless consolidation of the liquidity information in today's cash position, as well as various forecast sheets. Based on that, the system enables you to do a comprehensive liquidity anal analysis and to project cash shortages or surpluses for a vari variety of reporting criteria and timelines. This helps you to optimize your liquidity by cash flow impacting strategies. Next week, we will focus on financial and management accounting. I will show you the concept of manual postings in accounting, the closing process and relevant information to serve your external and internal stakeholders. Thanks for your attention and see you again next week. Bye.